working on any Warhammer models, Dave. You still want to see my Dunma Lumina. You probably will never see those, or if you do, it'll be a very long time from now, because I'm kind of... I'm a bit bitter about Age of Sigma 3rd Edition going away, so I'm not really on the Age of Sigma bandwagon at the moment, unfortunately. People say it doesn't matter, you always have the old editions available, that's just not true. It isn't, is it? It isn't, as much as we wish it were otherwise. It's just not, it's not the case. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here happily playing away 4th Edition 40k. But nobody fucking wants to play 4th Edition 40k except for me. So, all my mates who play 40k, they are very happy to play 10th Edition, even though I hate it. I've got one mate, he wants to play 2nd Edition. And one of these days, I might just do it. Honestly, just to play something other than 10th. Not tempted by Old World. Not tempted by Old World, he says. Does that answer your question? Old World and Horus Heresy are my, are my thing at the moment, because they seem to be the only main, main line games that GW is pushing at the moment that are relatively safe from updates. Like, they, they, they do... The Horus Heresy is only on its second edition, and the game has been out for, like, over a decade. Well, I might, might even be almost two decades at this point. Horus Heresy has been around for a long time now. And it's only on its second edition. I'm hoping the old world will be similar. Because I, you know what? I'm a very casual Warhammer player. I play... I can count on maybe one hand the number of games of Warhammer I play in a year. Um, so what I don't fucking need is what Games Workshop wants to do these days, which is chuck out a new edition of, of the game every th two years now? Is it two years, I think? Is it two or three? I'm not sure. I think it might be two. Every two years now and use a new edition of 40k and a new edition of AO AOS. And that means that I probably get somewhere between 10 to 15 games of a single edition before I have to chuck all the books in the bin and buy new ones. I mean, Wizards of the Coast, right? Wizards of the Coast, as we all know, are kind of money-grubbing scumbags in their own right. But they don't release a new edition of Dungeons and fucking Dragons every two to three years. Even they are not that stupid. Even they don't hate their consumers that much. And now we're in 2024 and 10th edition 40k is a thing and... The thing plays like a fucking glorified board game and I, oh, I just don't like it very much. It's not very fun. Like, modern 40k. It, IMO, in my opinion, I'll get, I promise I'll get down off the soapbox eventually. In my opinion, modern 40k absolutely coasts along on the fact that it has really lovely models that you play the game with. The models are wonderful. The game itself is garbage. If you, if you, I'm borrowing this, 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 this analogy from someone else and I forget who it was. Um, but if you had to, if 40k 10th edition was a game that you didn't play with models, but instead you played with little cardboard 2D tokens on a tabletop, nobody would play it. Nobody would play it. They'd play a couple of games of it and they'd be like, this is a bit shit. Like, I, I, I pretty much, like, focus on heresy now instead of 40k because, as, as previously mentioned, the game is practically safe from updates, which is lovely. Um, but also, Heresy has all of the old shit that I used to like about 40k. Like, because it, it, it feels like an actual war game and not a, not a board game. Because Heresy still has all those wonderful things like uh, penetration tables for vehicles and side armor versus front armor and uh, flamethrower templates and the blast markers and stuff. All that, all that shit. Scatter dice. All the stuff that made it feel like an actual battle was happening with the story. Uh, Heresy still has all of that. So even though Heresy mostly, for the most part, is always just games of Space Marines versus Space Marines, in spite of that, I still enjoy it more than 40k. For all of 40k's faction variety, the core game itself, I just find dull. It feels like a, almost like a board game, almost like a, almost like an analog version of a video game. You know, like... In, in, in 10th edition 40k, vehicles don't, like, have vehicle rules, you know? Like, they... In old school 40k, the way vehicles worked is they had side armor, front armor, rear armor. And obviously, if you shot a tank in the... Just, you know, just like in real life or whatever, if you shoot a tank in the sides or the rear, your anti-tank weapon is more likely to penetrate its armor because the armor is thinner at the sides and the rear than it is at the front, right? 
Um, if you once you hit, you get a glancing hit or a penetrating hit on the tank. You roll a dice to see what happens. Like, wh which bit of the tank did you hit? Did you take out the one of the weapons? Um, did you immobilize it? Did you blow the tracks off? Did you just stun and shake the crew? Um, did, does it freaking explode? Did you hit like the fuel tank or the ammo and it just detonates and goes kaboom? Um, if you went all the way back to second edition, what happens if a tank exploded? The turret would, could go flying off and land on somebody. Great stuff. Wonderful stuff. It just tells a story as it happens. Whereas in 10th edition modern 40k, vehicles are basically just a unit like any other with a health bar. It has X number of hit points and you shoot the tank and eventually the hit points go down until it has zero hit points left and then it dies. Um, and then you occasionally you can roll a, roll a dice and on a six it goes it goes bang and explodes and some nearby units might take some damage. Um, and that's it. Like you, there's no armor differences from which direction you're shooting the tank. It's always the same regardless of direction. The weapons on the tank don't don't have to be facing a certain direction. So like uh, you know like some tanks have sponsons on the side. So like this the gun on this side can't shoot anything over here because it can't aim through itself. The tank can't aim its gun through its own hole to shoot somebody on the other side. You can do that in 10th edition. Facing doesn't fucking matter in 10th edition. Um, so the tank, for all intents and purposes, is basically just like a giant infantry model. It's like a tank in an RTS game. It's like a tank in StarCraft. It, it doesn't behave like a tank. It just behaves like any other unit. It just has more hit points than your average soldier does. And then when the tank eventually dies, you roll a d6, and then maybe on a six it goes bang. Probably doesn't though. And then you just remove the tank from the tabletop. Because that's the other thing I should mention. In old 40k, when a tank is destroyed, it stays. The wreck stays on the on the tabletop, and it becomes part of the terrain that you have to kind of maneuver around. Like, if a tank goes down a narrow street, gets blown up, and then just sits there, like the street's blocked off now. Everybody who's behind it wants to get pushed forward. They got to climb up over the tank now to get get past it, over the wreck. Whereas in modern 40k, you just remove the model from the tabletop. The tank just goes poof and disappears. It's incredibly video gamey, which is a weird fucking thing to say about a tabletop game. The game is now not le much less about tactics and strategy, and it's now far more about list building. It's about list building and and competitive tournament play. The G GW have deliberately simplified and made the game more boring so that they can de balance it more easily for, for tournament play. Luckily, for my fucking sanity, Horus Heresy is a thing, and Horus Heresy uses all those old rules that I talked about. And if you play 30k, tanks still stick around after they get blown up or, or after they're destroyed. Flanking and firing arcs are still a thing in 30k. Failing a morale check and having to fall back is still a thing in 30k. Sweeping advances where everybody gets cut down after losing a melee combat is still a thing in 30k. Blast markers are still a thing in 30k. Flamer templates are still a thing in 30k. Scatter dice for mortar barrages is a thing in 30k, you know. That's another thing, fucking scatter dice, man, and blast templates. That was the thing I, I missed so much, because, like, in, 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 in 10th edition, if you want to fire your mortars at a unit that's right next to one of your units, no, no problem. You just roll the dice to see if the shots hit, do the damage, blah, 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 whatever. If you play, if you want to shoot mortars in 30k or in old school 40k at an enemy unit that's right next to one of your units, be prepared for the consequences for calling in a danger close barrage because they call it danger close for a reason because what happens is you drop you drop the template for the for the for the mortar rounds on the enemy unit then you roll the scatter dice to see if the shot scatters in a certain direction and what can happen is the firing solution maybe wasn't so good and the mortar barrage lands on your own troops instead of the enemy's troops because you decided to take that risk and call it in super danger close. Again, emergent storytelling that does not exist in 10th edition. That doesn't happen in 10th edition. If you want to shoot mortars at an enemy unit, you just shoot at the enemy unit. If the shots miss, they just disappear into the ether. They don't land nearby on anything else. I don't... You know what I should do? I should clip this entire segment. I should clip this entire segment and put it on YouTube for all the people who ask me, why? Do, why uh, when are you going to make more 40k videos? Why aren't you make? Why? Why did you stop making 40k uh, videos for, for for YouTube? This is why. This is why. 
right here. This entire this entire rant I've been on for like the last fucking 20 minutes or however long it's been. This is why I don't make 40k videos anymore. F's in the chat for old school 40k. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Sounds like the fourth edition D&D edi of 40k. Kind of is, actually, yeah. But with the mo no notable difference being that fourth edition D&D was mostly like... It was it was it was mostly panned by players. Like people didn't like it, and they said so. And and so, Wizards of the Coast made fifth edition, which fixed most of the issues. Um, whereas the different the difference is, I think that the most most 40, current forty k players actually they like they like the the video gamification of 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 current forty k. They're actually they're absolutely chuffed with it. So. I think, in fact, I think I, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if, if at this point most people currently playing 40k weren't even around for all the all the older editions, so they don't really know what they were missing. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like how patronizing that sounds. Oh, you newbies! If you only knew how much better the old 40k was, you you would hate it too. Uh, I, I won't go that far. Back in yeah, back in my day. Back in my day. Mud was muddier back in my day. I know how it sounds. I know how it sounds. But I'm not the only one who feels this way, and that's why I think 30k continues continues to be relatively successful. It's because there's a lot there's lots of guys like me out there who who did play old 40k and they do prefer it. And that's why Games Workshop has a market for people like me in the form of 30k. Did the new editions actually improve any system? There's a few little things that the new editions do a bit better. Like, you can split fire with units now in the newer editions. Like, say, if you've got a squad of space marines and they've all got bolt guns, except one guy's got a missile launcher. In all the old editions, for whatever reason, every guy in the unit had to shoot the same target. Which meant that if you wanted to shoot a tank with the missile launcher, all of the other guys in the unit had to shoot their small arms at the tank as well. And the, the, the wibbly-wobbly justification in the rules for this was that they're, they're, they're basically, like, suppressing it. They're shooting at the, the crew hatches and stuff like that. Um, while the missile launcher tries to get his shot in. But realistically, what it meant is that you were wasting 80% of the squad's firepower by shooting weapons at the tank that couldn't penetrate its armor. That's another thing about tanks in old 40k. If you shot it with small arms, you could you would do no damage to it. Um, whereas in modern 40k, you can actually kill a tank if you bring enough las guns. <laughs> if you bring enough las guns and you roll enough sixes... Again, in a very StarCrafty kind of a way, you can you can literally any unit can kill any unit in modern 40k. If it doesn't matter, like if you just get a bunch of shitty Imperial Guardsmen or cultists with auto guns or grots, yes, and you get enough of them to repeatedly shoot a land raider, they will kill the land raider because eventually you will roll enough sixes. Whereas in old 40k, they would never be able to kill the land raider because the fucking land raider. It has armor like this thick. It doesn't matter how many bullets you shoot at it. You're not going to penetrate its armor. I hope people have made some cool models for that, yeah. That's the other thing about 30k. 30k really encourages kit bashing and conversions in a way that 10th edition 40k does not. In 10th edition 40k, your models must have the exact weapons they have. They come with on the box. Box art on the front. Mm, options and stuff are very, very limited. You want to you have a Space Marine Captain with, like, whatever weapons you want? Not allowed. The Space Marine Captain nowadays has to have exactly the weapon loadout on the box. Which, again, is a bit shit. Um, but in 30k, you can give your Space Marine Praetors, which are basically the equivalent of Captains. You can give them whatever the fuck equipment you want, as long as you pay the points for it. You can have, an, like, an, I think it's an, a special option for the Imperial Fist, but you can have an Imperial Fist Captain in 30k who has an Assault Cannon. Just fucking walking around like the Terminator in Terminator 2 with a minigun. Mowing mowing fools down. It's like, melee weapons? No. Minigun. That's my weapon of choice. There's no official model for that. You can't buy an official Space Marine Captain with minigun. You know, with the salt cannon model. You have to just fucking convert it yourself. But that's where most of the fun is with, with, with this hobby. Like, it's supposed to be about kit bashing, converting and being creative. Anyway, I think I should probably conclude the rant around about now. We get it. We get it, Dave. Back in your day, mud was muddier. Now shut up and play Morrowind. <laughs>